Hi, welcome to Wednesday Wisdom. My name is Sarah Doramaja and I'm Ice Hockey Australia's Goaltender Development Manager. And today with me, I have Don McDonald, who is goalie coach in Australia, covers multiple roles. We will get to that later. Welcome, Don. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to this. Oh, pleasure. Uh, as always, let's go right back to the beginning. How did you get involved in hockey? Oh, uh, being from Canada, it's it just a, a natural progression. You go from walking to skating. Yep. <laughs> and for me, it was my father building an outdoor rink in our backyard. Nice. And probably from three years old on, I was skating and largely you know, the beginning in the backyard and then uh, into organized hockey. Oh, so cool. Okay. So organized hockey, when did you decide to become a goalie and why? Uh, the first two years I played, I was uh, a defenseman. Okay. And uh, at one point, a friend of my dad's who was a coach, he asked my dad if I'd be willing to fill in because a number of the players had a school event or something and they're going to be short. Right. And he asked if I'd be willing to play. And I, of course, I said yes. And I was like, well, what position would you like to play? And I thought goalie would be cool. <laughs> and I, I, I don't really know why. The only thing I could think of is that the goalie was on the ice the whole time. Yeah, exactly. How, how old were you? Oh, probably seven or eight. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And so I did it. And I absolutely loved it. Nice. And so the, ne the next year, I didn't want to be a defenseman anymore. I wanted to be a goalie. And it took off from there. So did you just, so age seven, eight, did you just commit to being a goalie? Did you ever go skate out again? I, I would skate out at hockey camps because right. I go to summer camps almost every summer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would skate out there, but playing, it was always as a goalie. Oh, yeah. nice. Okay, so let's talk about your playing career then as a goalie. What kind of cool things did you do? Were, you know, high school hockey, college hockey, like what did it look like for you? Uh, it was a little bit of everything. Okay. Uh, I went through minor hockey in rural Nova Scotia. And if anyone knows anything about Nova Scotia, it's in the east coast of Canada. And at the time that I was younger, it was not a hockey hotbed at all. Yeah. It was a hockey backwards area. And so we had local dads who would coach who didn't really know coaching. They were just interested. And so I was the goalie who everyone fired pucks at. And, you know, like, like many of my good age, practice, yeah. that, that, that's, that, that's how it was. Uh, but I had a little bit of talent apparently. And, I was able to progress, so I played uh, Tier Two hockey, a uh, Tier Two junior, okay, in uh, in Amherst, Nova Scotia. Uh, I played university hockey for Mount Allison, uh, which is uh, a university in Sackville, New Brunswick. Okay, and we had really good team. We were nationally ranked uh, for the the one year uh, all throughout the year. We had the top player in Canada who ended up playing in the NHL a bit, uh, Ross Yates. He ended up as the AHL scoring champion one year uh, in, in constant back and forth with Bruce Boudreau, Bruce Boudreau, who became uh, an NHL coach, of course. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we also had this defenseman by the name of John Anir, who was the last cut of the Canadian Olympic team in 1984. Right. Yeah, so you know, we had some really good hockey players with that. And then after I uh, finished university, I, I went to France for a year. And although I didn't plan on playing hockey, I got the chance to practice with the local team uh, from time to time in Strasbourg. Nice. In Strasbourg, France. So that was cool. Uh, I ended well, up why did you, sorry to interrupt, why did you go to France? Was that like a. Oh, it's it, just because <laughs> in Canada, you, you learn French and I wanted to get better at French and I always wanted to travel. So why not do the two things together? Nice. Awesome. So we did. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's Strasbourg. So, so in Strasbourg and you know, I got to practice with some guys who would end up playing on the French national team and Olympics and world championships and stuff. So that was cool. And then when I came back home, I ended up playing senior hockey. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a senior B league, which we had a lot of really good hockey players, a couple of NHL, you know, ex NHL guys from time to time would play and ex college players and junior players. So that was a lot of fun. 
Mm -hmm, I bet. <laughs> uh, yeah, we would practice, you know, once, twice a week, depending on how we were doing. And we'd have games either Friday, Saturday or Saturday, Sunday. And yeah, it was a lot of traveling around by bus and getting to know the guys really well and having a lot of fun. Nice. Okay. So then after that, you didn't, it wasn't like you came to Australia straight away. You had, no. I guess, some sort of professional career outside of hockey. Yeah. yeah. I'm a teacher by training and I started off in Hong Kong. I started my teaching career in Hong Kong. Oh, and, so yeah. close to Australia, but not quite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in, uh, in Hong Kong, I, I played hockey as well. Yeah. And uh, I think that's really where I started my, my coaching career. Okay. And yeah, so I, I used to coach uh, the little kids uh, and, and, and help out as I could. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so then how did you come to be in Australia? When did that happen? We moved here in 2006. Okay. And it was a result uh, of my wife. And she was recruited to come to, to Canberra to teach at the ANU Medical School. Ah. And uh, yeah, so before we came, the first thing I did was get on the internet ice hockey Canberra and it came up that they played and so I told my wife yep I'm good to go nice yep <laughs> only if there's hockey okay so first impressions of hockey when you came to Australia I I my, Sue and I came to Australia in 2005 okay to have a, a, a look at what was being offered to Sue yeah and during that time uh, we got in contact with some people and I got to play with the old timers here in Canberra uh, mm -hmm. during the week that we were here. And that was a, a really cool introduction to the area and also to hockey. And in all honesty, it wasn't very much different from what I was playing at the time. You know, we had some really good players you know, here in Canberra and, you know, some, some guys who just wanted to come out and play because it was fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was that's what it was like, you know, where I was playing in, in Canada when I left. It was it was a fun old timers beer league and it was comparable. So yeah. I knew that the hockey was, was going to be fine. Oh, that's nice. OK, so I um, before we get into the coaching side of things, what sort of things have you seen in Australian hockey? Well, specifically with the goalies, are there is there anything that stands out that maybe we should be addressing? I'm going to go back to when, I, when we first got here. Okay. And a, a lot of the goalies weren't trained by goalie coaches. They were like I was when I started off. Okay. You know, you, you were you were someone who just took a lot of shots. Yeah. And I think the more shots you took in practice, that equated to better goalie goalie training. And it, it probably took a number of years for that to start to change. Mm -hmm. And when when I got here and started helping out with goalies. I tried to do things a little bit differently, but even at that point, you know, I wasn't exposed to goalie coaching. I was doing things that I thought might help. And so it was really an education for me trying to become a goalie coach as it was as much for me trying to help out yeah, the goalies. Right. And th that became a really interesting journey for me. And I really enjoyed it. Nice. And well, I mean, it's, yeah, it, it, it's led you to a few several roles just by pursuing it and, and constantly educating yourself on it as well, which, which I know you do. And, you know, that makes a good teacher too. Um, but, but as uh, ice hockey ACT's goalie coordinator, yep. so if people don't know that, if you live in Canberra and you want goalie info, Don's the person you want to go to. Um, and then more recently, well, continuing recently, I am Sydney Sirens AWIHL goalie coach, championship winning in your first year, no big deal. <laughs> um, and also you are the head goalie coach at IHA's national development camps that we run in January. So yes. there's so much more that goes along as well, but I, I think those are the three big, big key ones as well. So what sort of things are you doing in those roles, implementing to encourage more goalie inclusion? Uh, let's start off with uh, the local item. Sure. Uh, we're trying to get not just goalie coaches, but the coaches themselves mm. more in tune to what should be happening to help goalies out. You know, I, I, as you know, you know we, we've spoken to a number of coaches in different coaching clinics over the last number of years, trying to show that there is a difference 
between training goalies and training players. Mm -hmm. And I think for the local focus, that's a big thing is trying to get the coaches aware that goalie need to have specific goalie coaching, uh, especially with skating. Absolutely. Uh, it's, if we can get 10 minutes at the beginning of each, each training session, that goes a long way to helping out with the goalies. And then from there, you know, this is something that's going to be uh, more emphasis now because I think coaches are starting to understand that goalies do need specific goalie type drills mm -hmm. to help their development. So the next is getting the coaches to institute drills, team drills, that not are goalie focused, but but include goalie development in the drill. And now, the goalie has a role to do in that, and they know what the exactly. role is. Exactly, and the goalie also has to be accountable for that as well. So it's yes. it's it's not just oh let's get the goalie included. They're always going to be included, but let's make it so that the goalie is accountable for specific movements or awareness that type of idea. You know, Absolutely. I think that's something that we can put more emphasis in on coaching across the nation. Mm -hmm. And that will help not only the goalies. And this is something I think that as you're aware of, if it's good for the goalies, it's gonna be just as good for the shooters. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we can develop that kind of mindset amongst coaches and of players, everyone's gonna benefit from, from the goalies to the skaters themselves. Mm. I, I think the easiest one is making sure that players are following their rebound, not just I've shot the puck and yeah. I'm skating away. Follow your rebound because then the goalie needs to follow that rebound too, because that's exactly what happens in a game. Exactly. And it's interesting, you know, for the, the national camps, this is the best players in the country at age group coming there. And they don't do that. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the skaters, they don't naturally follow a rebound. Just take a shot make, and off they go. Them. Yeah, they take their shot and then they peel off. So there is work to be done. Mm. And the quicker we can get that type of mindset built into even our best players, our best players are going to get better and our goalies are going to get better. Absolutely. Okay, so we are getting more goalie coaches across the country. Yes. Is there, is there anything, we do have a goalie coordinator in each state and that does include Tasmania yep. and Northern Territory as well. Yep. Is, is there anything that the player coaches should be doing to try and tap into that? I, I think one thing that we can try and do is make all the coaches, the goalie coaches aware that there are these state level head goalie coaches and that we're resources. And we're more than willing to share our ex experience and ideas to help them become better goalie coaches. Mm -hmm. And I think the next step that 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 you as the, the national goalie coordinator are, are probably working on as, as we speak is developing some type of training or coaching certification. It's coming. <laughs> and a couple of weekends ago, I, I was part of the, the USA hockey yeah. bronze system and what they went over is exactly what you and I do when we go and talk to the coaches so we're we're with the best systems in the world with what we do and just that we have to make other people aware that we know what we're doing in that sense and that we can help them become better coaches 100 percent, and I think that's something that's key that within our own networks internationally as well with the people that we are talking to the resources are there, the knowledge yep. is there, um, and maybe there are some things that are a little bit different. Obviously, there's our geography, which we can't change. There's yeah. a number of yes. rinks, which right now we can't change, and access to the rinks and all that, but the knowledge and resources do exist here. We do have yes. high-level, skilled goalie coaches that can deliver, Yeah. and people need to be tapping into that. It does exist. Yes, so absolutely. If, if anyone does not know who their state goalie coordinator is, please get in touch with us and we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yes. Brilliant. Uh, okay, well, so player coaches, yes, we do want you to tap into that. Be a little, is there, I guess, any sort of one advice you would give to team coaches uh, to consider with their goalies if they don't have access to a goalie coach? If there's one thing that they could go and do better maybe. Well, I think every team should have a goalie coach. And that's something that you're preaching nationally, but that's not, I don't think being applied everywhere with, with equal force as it was. 
So even if there's not a goalie who would like to volunteer to be a goalie coach, we can get parents to, to be part of that. I mean, you just recently interviewed uh, Pete uh, Crankshaw, Pete Crankshaw yeah. who was not a, a, a goalie. No goalie background at all. Start off. He was a parent who had coaching experience in another sport, but he had the willingness to learn, the open-mindedness to learn. And that's all we need from, from some parents from time to time mm-hmm. is the willingness to say, okay, I'm going to step up to the plate and I'm going to help my team out. Now, this is where people like yourself and maybe myself can come in and provide a couple of drills here and there and point them in certain directions to help them become better at what they're doing. And in the end, it's really not rocket science that we're trying to get across. But what it is, is a set of eyes that can see what someone's doing Mm -hmm. and then make suggestions on how to do things a little better based on their understanding. And I, and I think, yeah, and, and I think in, in any case, uh, even if it's not technically specific, at least it's a sounding board because the goalie mentally has an incredibly different job to do. And even if it's someone to just talk to about an issue that they just need to, hey, what do you think about this? Or I need this or, or whatever. Like that goes a long way. It, it really does. It really does. And I was, I was listening to a recent Ingle Magazine podcast. And in the NHL, I think it was last year, 50% of the NHL goalie coaches were non-goalie players during their playing years. So go. that just shows that you don't have to be a goalie to be to understand what it is that you're doing. Absolutely. So for anyone who is out there that is considering that, like a parent, please do get involved. There's lots of resources available there to help you out. And the goalies will benefit. And, th- and that's why we, with anything that we sort of do uh, with clinics, with coaching courses, with whatnot, we welcome parents to come along because Absolutely. even if, even if they're not going to be a goalie coach, at least they can understand what their child is going to be going through and the expectations Absolutely. and even just being there for support would be great for, for the yep. goalies. Yep. Um, okay. I want to finish off with something a little bit different today. So from Nova Scotia, I know you have a Sydney Crosby story. Please enlighten us. <laughs> This goes back to 2005, his draft year. Okay. Uh, Sidney Sidney Crosby was an 18 year old and he was just getting ready for his draft. And part of his preparation was was to work out. And because he was in in Halifax, he was a known commodity. And I remember this one day, he was working out at St. Mary's University with his personal trainer Mm -hmm. and my son, who was probably five at the time was doing a soccer camp at St. Mary's university. And so they were on the, on the field doing their training and Sidney Crosby was with his trainer in one end of, of the field going through his routine. Mm. And you know, it was the kind of soccer camp where you drop your kid off, they're in good hands and you come back later. Yes. But I was hanging out, not so I'd watch my son, I wanted to see what Sidney Crosby was doing and it is it, it the plyometrics he was doing and a lot of lateral movement stuff and it was really cool to see but after watching for about 20 minutes and well it's time to go home so I got into my car turned on the radio and there was this awful news that came out of London England that there was an, a terrorist attack on the subway oh yes yeah and so I sat there going, damn, 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 not again, because something had happened the year before, yeah. something, something similar. And I was like quite loud. And Sydney and his trainer came over to my car. I said, are you okay? Is, is everything okay? And I just got off oh, the damn terrorists. You know, they hit London again. And so Sydney Crosby <laughs> and his trainer going, oh man, that's a bummer. That, that sucks. <laughs> Well, there you that, go. That was my, that's my Sidney Crosby story. I, I, I love it. And I think, uh, I mean, obviously not a lot of us have had any interaction with him, but I think it just shows, um, well, the Canadian in him, the caring nature as well. <laughs> and I think even at age 18, there's just that caring nature, but also what you would want to see in leaders as well, which is what he is yeah. great at doing. 
Yeah, I love it. very much so. Thank you for sharing your Sydney Crosby story, but also thank you for sharing just your hockey story and, and your journey as well. So this is, it's been wonderful chatting to you. Thank you so much. Um, and, and I look forward to including you in more and more things that we plan on rolling out. Well, Sarah, as you know, I, I love working with you. you. You do a great job of organizing goalie training and goalie education in the country. And for everyone in the country who's not aware, Sarah does an awful <laughs> lot. And uh, we're starting to see the benefits of that because our goalies are getting better. And a lot of that can trace back to, to your efforts, probably starting five years ago. Thank you. I appreciate that. And it's nice to now see a little bit of international recognition that one, hockey exists in Australia, but two, what ha is happening for the goalies as well. And uh, as much as I would like to claim, yes, it's my own work, it's not. It's a team effort. It's utilizing all the resources we have around us to make it work. So because teamwork makes the dream work. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Don. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure.